Fox 5 and Hot 97 present Street Soldiers with Lisa Evers. Tonight, we are together in person. Our first town hall since COVID-19 kept us apart. And we're in Brooklyn for some tough talk. We do not need to defund NYPD. We need to refund NYPD. With two of the city's top cops. The men and women of the NYPD are working hard to make this city safe. Well, we have to do different things to prevent this gun violence and to keep our people safe. So how can we stop the shootings? It's like everybody is living in fear. This is Street Soldiers, a push for peace town hall. It is really great to be here. I'm Lisa Evers, your host for Street Soldiers on Hot 97, Fox 5, and Fox Soul. This is our 10th annual Push for Peace Town Hall. We are talking about stopping the shootings and what can be done. And we're bringing this to you from the NYPD Community Center right here in East New York, Brooklyn. You know, we are at a very critical crossroads here in this summer of 2021. Shootings are at an all time high in some cities and near record highs in many other cities, including here in New York. They're happening too often in broad daylight, too often when children are caught in the crossfire and when there's no regard for who's out there or who's going to get hit. A lot of people say that it has gone too far. That's why we're involved with this. That's why we're doing this program. And that's why community groups are so very important to what is happening. The NYPD is reimagining policing and part of that has to do with rebuilding the trust and the relationship with the community. New York City shootings hover close to a 20-year high, a problem so bad statewide, Governor Cuomo has declared a disaster emergency on gun violence. This comes as police reforms are underway and the NYPD is implementing new strategies to protect youth and give parents peace of mind. I sat down with NYPD Chief Jeffrey Madry, who tells me as gun violence becomes more common, even in broad daylight, it's critical to think outside the lines. So what do we do? I mean, we, are we putting more cops out there? Yes. Are we reaching out to our community partners or asking for assistance with our detective squads? Yes. But what do we do? How do we keep young people off the streets? Chief Madry says one solution is the NYPD Community Center, which offers a wide array of free programs, including martial arts, basketball, and other sports, as well as chess and robotics. There are also innovative activities like the Options Program, which I got to see firsthand. It uses virtual reality to teach conflict resolution. There's also training in website design, photography, and digital skills like coding and podcasting. Plus, it's bridging a troubling gap. Because there's a big disconnect between officers and the youth and our civilians in the community. So a, a program like this, especially Options, and bringing people to the community center to host these events, um, it brings everybody together and it, it puts a different perspective on who these officers are behind the uniform. All programs have an adult supervisor or instructor, as well as a police officer. Partial funding comes from the nonprofit Police Foundation. The center is in a precinct where shootings are all too common, an under-resourced community full of many working families who otherwise would never have non-emergency contact with police. Just like we had in our housing developments growing up, we had a beat cop, a community cop who knew all of our families, who knew if we got in trouble that he could go to our house and talk to our families. The same kind of dynamics. Team Wright Basketball Association founder Andrew Wright came up to me to stress the impact the center has had on the youth in his basketball program. The NYPD Center has been instrumental in saving at least 20, 25 lives throughout this pandemic. Um, when the pandemic originally set in, all, all high school programs had, came to a halt and um, the NYPD opened up their doors to our kids. Joining me is NYPD Chief of Department Rodney Harrison. Also with us is Aisha Sekou. She is the founder and CEO of Street Corner Resources. We're also joined by Chief Jeffrey Madry. He's the Community Affairs Chief for NYPD. And also the rapper HD. He is trying to reform hip hop. He is a Marine. Thank you for your service, by the way. And he is also a college student. So he's trying to change the narrative that in hip hop too often encourages the gun violence. HD, thank you so much for being with us. Chief Harrison, I want to ask you, you hear about all these crimes, you respond to them, you direct the investigations, you deploy, you decide where police are going to go. Why are we in this situation right now with all these shootings? That's a question I keep getting asked. So Lisa, if, if I could just kind of take you back to 2020, um, and there's multiple things that kind of hit us uh, in New York City. We could talk about the, uh, the pandemic, we could talk about the, the protests, um, the, but there was a lot of frustration that hit New York at one time. And, uh, you know, we saw a, 
not just a major spike in violence, but we also saw a major spike in people carrying guns. Mm. And uh, it, it really made things difficult in, for people that are in this line of work, that are not just servants, uh, public servants, but for well, public safety. Well, trying to do your job, and you don't know who's got a gun in the trunk or under the seat or in a bag. Absolutely. And uh, there was a trust factor that we had in 2019. You know, we had neighborhood policing in place, and we were working with the community. We were working with groups um, like Aisha Sekou and Street Corner Resources. And if you were to ask me, I think that incident that happened in, in Minnesota had an effect on New York regarding our, Yes, had a major effect on our relationship with the community that we're here to protect and serve. And because of that, the lack of cooperation that we might have received in 2019 working with the community was somewhat broken. And regarding being able to identify individuals who were carrying guns, identify individuals that were committing shootings, um, they were able to get away with it. Our reason for our success prior to 2020 was community relations. I mean, I think that's something that's really um, somewhat underappreciated. Underappreciated, under right? Yeah, I, 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 let me tell you something. We really had strong relationships in 2019. We were rocking and rolling in the right direction. All the department had been retrained? All the department was retrained. We had uh, neighborhood coordination officers working with the communities that we were here to protect and serve. And uh, everything got kind of swept away with one incident. And that was a change. So now, now it's, been, it's been a very, very big reset, which we're going to hear about from Chief Madry in a moment. HD, give us a sense of how do you feel being out on the streets? You're going to school. You're in the studio. You're working your records, you're, you're making your contacts in the music industry, and why do you say hip hop needs to be reformed? Uh, I definitely think it needs to be reformed in a sense of we need to explain to, you know, the youth that although we're saying what we're saying, there's an end result, right? And you always have to pay attention to that. You can't just tell them that this is what I'm doing and, and, and this is the route that I'm going and not give them anything that, like a consequence. You know, because they, they understand it's entertainment, but they also have to understand that there's a consequence followed by every action that we're saying in the music. So it is vital that artists, you know, take the approach to kind of just, you know, come together with the communities and, you know, inspire the youth to, you know, understand that they can do better and they can lead, you know, one another. But we also have to ensure that we create young leaders, right? When I was growing up in Brooklyn, New York, um, I had a lot of, it was a lot of peer pressure, you know what I mean? But it was also, I had other individuals who would tell me, no, this is the right thing and this is the wrong thing. And I think that we need that amongst the youth. In order to do that, we have to inspire the youth as well and to create, like again, to create No, we're going to get, get into that a little yeah. bit more. Chief Medry, you talk about, we, we've talked about police reform a lot. We talked about it on the show, we talk about it on the news, it's everywhere. But you say there needs to be community reform. What do you mean by that? Absolutely. And before I say that, I want to just let you know, this is my new favorite MC right now. So, <laughs> a really intelligent you. young man. But uh, absolutely, uh, you know, and Chief Harrison detailed a lot of different issues, a lot of different uh, things that we identified that may have caused different problems and may have contributed to uh, increase in crime, increase in shootings in particular. And, you know, with the pandemic that was happening, with the death of George Floyd, when all these things happened, I don't think it was a time for our communities to start uh, being torn apart. It was a time for us to come together. And, and that's what I see. Like, we want police reform, and I'm totally in agreement that, hey, we need to make changes. We need to strengthen our relationships and our bonds with our community and do things in a more professional manner in a way that brings the community closer to us. But at the same time, as the police are changing and we're making the efforts to change, the community doesn't, can't you know, take that as a pass to continue to shoot and shoot and harm each other and harm families. And, and take that as a pass to do things that are crim exactly. criminal behavior. Let's put it, so, let's call it what it is. So Lisa, so while the police reforms and we make the changes, our communities have to reform too. Our young brothers and sisters have to put guns down. We don't have to tear our community or communities apart. We need to come together. All right, Aisha, real quick on the community reform piece. What do you think about that? So uh, I just want to be clear that, uh, one, the, the development of relationships does not happen overnight. And so what we need to see is we hear the brass in NYPD saying one thing, but what we actually see delivered on the street is a different thing. We have to see what they're wanting and wanting for our community. 
and wanting for their officers to do, we have to see that in implemented in our neighborhoods. The other thing is, is that when we talk about music like HD did, and we talk about, uh, you know, there has to be hip hop reform, we have to talk about uh, language, because language drives behavior and drives the mindset. And if the mindset in the, in the music is to shoot, to kill, to disrespect women, disregard people, whether it's police or everyday citizens, then those are negative calls to action. So if we're paying for that music, supporting that rapper, waving his banner, his flag, whatever, hitting up his gram, we are supporting that negative call to action that causes the trigger to be pulled. Coming up, my only two children died of gun violence. How do you find the strength to come out? I want to introduce you to Patricia Hamilton. Her daughter, Shalimar Burkett, was shot and killed in May of 2021 of this year while she was at a memorial for somebody else who had been shot and killed. And Ms. Hamilton, thank you so much for being with us. Yes, I have um, my only two children died of gun violence. My son, Neon Hamilton, three years ago, he um, got shot. And last month, my daughter, Shalimar Burkett got shot at a vigil. And I would just like these killers off the street. I just want justice. How do you find the strength to come out? And first of all, we appreciate you coming out today. I have to have the strength because I have three grandkids I have to, you know, take care of. And we thank you for coming out with your family to help us understand the toll that this has taken. So it's changed your life. Thank you. All right, thank you, so, thank you so much. And we have one of your relatives here, Harriet Hines. Harriet, what has this done to your family, these, these tragic losses? Well, our family is extremely um, distraught. It's like broken up the family in terms of um, my little cousins do not have their mom anymore in their life. And let me say the worst thing that can happen to anyone is for a parent to have to bury their child. It should be the opposite way around. Um, I've been very vocal about the issue with gun violence. I've been very vocal about the need for NYPD. We do not need to defund NYPD. We need to refund NYPD because the community along with the NYPD needs to build an alliance so that we can get these killers off the street. Um, we're, as a family, we're trying our best to make sense out of a senseless death. You know, uh, we still have not found the killers and um, we're just begging the, the NYPD and we're begging the community, someone come out and speak. So I that's a big, been a big problem. Let me, let me get a response. Chief Harrison, you were the chief of detectives before you became the chief of department. Yeah. The detectives have solved some of these cases very quickly and others even when no, nobody talked, like with baby Devel Gardner Jr. in Bed-Stuy, it yeah. took a long time and even though nobody talked, they still were able to, to crack the case. What do you say to this family that's, that's suffering with the loss of two, two of their members and, and no arrests? So, so first and foremost, condolences. Uh, and like she stated, uh, nobody should uh, have to bury their child. Um, you just take a look at some of the incidents that also happened throughout the city. Um, Brandon Hendricks in, in the Bronx. Um, talk about a Mayor Griffin uh, that happened in, in, in Baisley uh, developments. It's, it's happening too often. And it's important that people understand that we want to hold people accountable and bring these perpetrators to justice. And the way to, for that to work is we need the community to feel comfortable to come forward. You know, I always promote our Crime Stoppers hotline 1-800-577-TIPS. People know what's going on. We need for people to feel comfortable to come forward so we can help my detectives, who are the greatest detectives in the world, um, these lead, lead them mm -hmm. in the right direction to solve some of these cases. And you just raised the reward, 3,500. Is it really anonymous? Like Ab abs absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Let's go to the youth here because we have members here from the Team Right Basketball Association. You want to stand up and ask us your, your question or comment? We really want to get a sense because you guys are out there at school, you're going to practice, you got all your tournaments and stuff. What's, how is this gun violence affecting you guys? Um, I feel, um, my name is Mike Well. Um, I feel like gun violence is affecting us because like, as the youth, even though like, we may not be in the streets like, doing negative things, we still young and we still out, outside. But it's like, it's this negative connotation where we can't even like wear what we like to wear or 
like, you know, do certain things because everybody is walking around trying to like put on this, this tough guy persona and carry around guns and, you know, harm us. So it feels so it's like it's hard and it's it's real you gotta like you gotta be strong, real strong. You just gotta keep your mind straight to know what you really wanna do and have tunnel vision and be positive. All right. Well thank you very much. Thank you. Andrew, you wanna say a word about that? Because you're the founder. I wanna this is Andrew Wright. He is the he is the founder of the Team Wright Basketball Association. And uh, they practice here. They were given space here during the pandemic. You told me something pretty amazing when I was here and, and seeing what you guys were doing, that this actually saved lives. It absolutely saved lives. It was a um, safe haven for our kids. It was a place where kids can come into the building and absolutely be themselves 100%. Chief Mary, what about that when you hear that? Everyone that's in this room, we are sitting in a, this space that is for all of you to come out and do programs, to engage with one another, to engage with members of this department. We have so many programs that are run here by officers as well as by outside members of the community. Well, I think that's the key of it too, is that you have a lot of community members that, that come in. Aisha, how important are the programs? We have to make it so that our young people who are doing the right thing, like this young man said, it feels uncomfortable. We have to make our young people comfortable again. We have to stop crim criminalizing them, expecting that they are wrong because they dress a certain way and create programming where they have go-to spaces and go-to people, because that's where they learn to win, lose, agree, disagree, and resolve conflict. That's right. how we learned it. Right. So we need to open up more spaces. Okay. <laughs> HD, did you want to say, did you want to add something to that? Like, did you want to add something to what the HD to, to Yeah, I definitely the, wanted, I just wanted to add on, I agree with what you said. Um, it allows everyone to come together and unite and to, you know, respect one another in a, in a different space and in a different light. Mm -hmm. um, for myself, um, you know, I'm again, Brooklyn, New York, I was exposed to so many different negative things. However, it was a program that my mother um, put me in, which is called the Fresh Air Front Program. And from then on, you know, took my life in a whole different trajectory. I joined the military from then on. I was exposed to different things. I was around different people and my mindset changed. And when I went back to Brooklyn, New York, you know, I tried to, you know, shed this information on my peers and my friends. And it kind of, it helped them in that, in that format. What's your first name and what's your question or comment? Um, my name is Josiah. Um, my question is, um, I'm a college, I'm, I'm about to be in college, and so what is some things that, you know, as the youth, we could expect, like, to ensure our safety? Like, you know, yeah. That's my All right, Chief Harrison, what about that? As a, as a youth going to college, what, what are some of the things that he can expect from the police department to enhance and increase his safety? Yeah, so, and at, at number one is I, I appreciate your question, and I, I, I got to touch upon couple programs that we have in place that are getting kids off the streets and into the right places. One, we have the Rockaway Colts under Lenora Moody that's getting kids off the, off the streets and getting them um, in a situation where they can compete in football. Then we have Winston Faison. He has an aeronautics program here that's getting kids an opportunity to learn how to fly a plane. Mm -hmm. Then we have Mike Almonte. He's got the Blue Chips program, uh, playing basketball with the kids. I mean, there's so many things that we're doing regarding getting into the communities to make sure that these idle hands are busy and doing things that are going to guide them and be successful for their future. So, you know, believe it or not, it's not about, we're not gonna be able to arrest our way out of getting stopping gun That's violence. Right. It's gonna be about, hey, what can we do as the NYPD, building programs, strengthening relationships to keep these young men and women involved and active? For me, it's really about building relationships and that's what community affairs is all about, bridging the gap between mm -hmm. police and community. You heard Sister Aisha say more resources, changing the mindset, building relationships. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a, a multi-layered approach where we have to do different things to prevent this gun violence and to keep our people safe. All right, thank you, Chief Harrison. What can you tell our audience this summer that you and this department of tens of thousands of officers is going to do to make people safe? The men and women of the NYPD are working hard to make this city safe. It's just as uh, Jeff stated earlier. We're getting more guns off the street than ever before. They're working hard, they're putting their lives on the line, and we're gonna to continue to do that to make sure that New York City stays one of the safest big cities in the country. All right, well, I, I wanna thank our panel, HD. Let's give, them, uh, give it up for... 
Chief Jeffrey Madry, thank you so much. Thank you. Aisha Seku, thank you very, very much. Chief Harrison, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. I'm Lisa Evers. Remember, use your mind. It's your best weapon. I hope it's your only weapon. Let's push for peace, love, and justice for all.